the Spirit is saying, come inside with me and let's just take a look at what you are still valuing and devaluing. What you are still holding up in your mind as something that's more important than the love of God. And we begin to get into the practice of going inside and really becoming honest with ourselves about what it is we truly want and what is the state of mind that we truly want. It will involve a dismantling of the way you perceive the world right now. So there is going to be some shifting and changing. It's really just shifts and changes in your own mind, but it will seem to play out in terms of, of the world that is being perceived by that sleeping mind. And the key thing again will be staying focused on what is it that I truly want, coming back to that, what is it that I truly want, keeping the mind very, very focused. When you reach your experience of transfer of training and and truly forgiving all things that are perceived through the five senses, uh, then you start to tap into this happiness and this peace and this joy in a very consistent way. Of course, the final stage is going to be the breakthrough uh, stage, but that would be the stage that would be the equivalent of being under Christ's control. That's the stage where you're just beholding the world. You're beholding the world in all of its loveliness. A world without judgment. A world without differences. A, a unified world. A, a harmonious world. What's not to like about a unified, harmonious world? If, you wanted, if you've ever thought of heaven on earth or the, the most heavenly state that you could experience, then that's, that's the final stage it's called a period of achievement in the Manual for Teachers. But in order to come to that, it will take faith because the things that you trusted in before, your learning, the learning of the world, you know, we all have had education, we all have had upbringing, we all have had conditioning, and all of this education and upbringing and conditioning, the the majority of it, I would say the vast majority of it, has been part of a blockage or a hindrance of knowing who we truly are. So, you know, at one point in the Course in Miracles, Jesus says, you've been poorly taught. <laughs> okay, that's, that's pretty direct. I've been poorly taught. Another point, he says, resign now as your own teacher. But you've been, you've been teaching and learning a lot here, and, and it's not been going well. You know, you have not found the freedom that you had hoped for. You had not found that, that happiness that you had longed for. Your teaching and learning was very limited because it was, it was guided by the ego. The Holy Spirit is not going to destroy the ego's thought system, because the ego's thought system was believed in by a very powerful mind, the Holy Son of God, and, and love and light and God, eternity, doesn't even know of destruction. The most we can say of what love and light does with the Holy Spirit, with the ego or the death wish, is it's called reinterpretation. That's as harsh as God can go. I mean, God, pure, pure love doesn't even know of error, so the Holy Spirit, which is just a corrective extension for what God doesn't understand, God doesn't understand separation. God could never understand separation because God creates in wholeness. Spirit creates spirit creates spirit. Spirit doesn't even understand separation. But the Holy Spirit, that corrective aspect, has one function and that is reinterpretation. So, if you're looking for a knight in shining armor, that knight in shining armor <laughs> to save the day is reinterpretation. That's all that we're being asked to do is allow our minds to go through a reinterpretation of the world.